Hello, everyone. My name is Yesunde Holloway, and I'm saying hello from Lagos, Nigeria. Um, I'm the chair of the World Federation of Engineering Organizations Committee of Women in Engineering. Today, we have um, a very interesting, we have a, a distinguished um, uh, panel uh, of speakers. Sima and Anya, Sima for Sima and Sima and um, Anya, and they will be talking about um, theme one. Um, and they are distinguished um, female en engineers. Um, I'm not going to do much talking today. I will be handing over to Professor Don Bonfield, um, who is going to make opening remarks. Um, but I'll just talk about housekeeping, one or two sentences. We have a Google Docs that's been shared. That's where the questions will be. And then the moderator will um, ask, will take the questions from there and the, and the, um, and the um, panelists will answer the questions on what they presented. I will be sitting back to um, listen, enjoy and learn. And I look forward to the um, interactive discussions. Thank you. Dawn, your, it's, your, it's, your, it's your turn. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Shitande. So my name is Dawn Bonfield and I'm joining you from the UK and I'm Deputy Chair of the Women in Engineering Committee at WFEO and uh, it's really good to be here with colleagues today. And I'm really pleased to introduce this topic of women's retention in engineering and the pathways into leadership for women. So we know in engineering that we struggle with low gender diversity in our sector globally. And that's a problem that we're trying to address with many capacity building schemes. But what we don't always appreciate is that women are being lost in the engineering sector at a much greater rate than they should be. I'm going to give you as an example, some figures from the United Kingdom. And I imagine these will be quite similar in different parts of the world and they illustrate this point. So according to the Engineering Council in the UK, which is our professional register of professionally registered um, engineers, women make up a total of about 6% of those professionally registered engineers. And whilst we're getting increasing numbers joining the profession, that's only increased by one percentage point in the past four years, and that now stands at 11%. So that means 11% of newly registered uh, engineers are women. And even this tiny increase is dwarfed though by the numbers who leave the profession. And a staggering 79% of women, professionally registered women, leave the profession under the age of 54, compared to an also large number of 38% of men. Women leave the professional register 18 years earlier than men, and they spend half as long as men being registered. Another report came out this week by Atkins, the design consultancy in the UK, which paints a very similar picture. And it reports that over a course of 10 years, what it calls career deflections, such as stereotyping, isolation and bias, a macho culture, lack of inclusion, lack of flexibility, lack of um, discrimination, lack of support, mentoring and networks, and lack of role models, that results in women leaving the engineering sector at twice the rate of men, with 70% of women leaving the industry within 10 years. And that is a loss that we cannot afford to endure. Women have lower retention rates in engineering than similar professions, and the disparity in retention between men and women is greater in engineering than in other professions. So the report recommends a number of actions and on top of the list of actions comes the need for more reporting, more data gathering and more target setting. And this reinforces our call at the Women in Engineering Committee and indeed our commitment under the United Nations Women Action Coalition for Technology and Innovation for Gender Equality for more gender disaggregated statistics. And I'm really pleased to say that as, as a result of our work on this topic in the UK with the Engineering Council, this is being addressed as a priority by the board. And I'm hoping that some progress will be made to remove the barriers that are causing women to leave engineering. Other recommendations of the report include the need to offer a range of support, 
role models, networks, mentoring, line managers, accountability for change, career support, as well as an inclusive culture, transparency and fairness in promotion. I also work in academia and in that area we've got evidence of women's career progression being impeded by re reduced grant funding, barriers to publishing and the burden of additional service work that they have to take as well as the recent increase in caring and domestic responsibilities due to COVID. So it's really heartening to see that this evidence report backs up our call for more action around retention and promotion of women in both the corporate and the academia sectors. And that reinforces what, what we recommended uh, through the UNESCO engineering report on sustainable development. So I'm really looking forward to hearing what the speakers have to say. And I'd like to um, do two introductions now. Yi Leong will be the moderator of the session. She will um, join us after the first speaker, but I'll in introduce Yi now. So Professor Yi Leong is the Director of Research Excellence at Padena University in Malaysia. She received her PhD in electrical engineering from the University of Queensland in Australia in 2005. She's currently chair of the Institution of Engineering and Technology Malaysian Local Network, the XCOM member, and she's a council member of the Institution of Engineers Malaysia. She's a board director of INWES, the International Network of Women Engineers and Scientists, and she's received the ASEAN Meritorious Service Award in 2017, amongst several other awards. She's the WFEO Women in Engineering Committee lead for theme one, which is this theme that we're discussing today. So as I say, Yi will join us after the first speaker. And the first speaker is Professor Seema Singh. She's also an INWES board member uh, from South Asia and was vice president of education and research during the period 2018 to 2020. She's done extensive research on various aspects of the engineering labour market for more than two decades. And she's taught economics to engineering students at Delhi Technolo Technological University and was head of Depart the Department of Humanities at DTU between 2006 and 2017. Besides Inwes, she's also associated with other women's organisations. So welcome to Seema and we're going to hear from Seema now. Thank you very much. Though promoting gender equality and women in parliament has been accepted as a major goal to achieve since 1975, when the United Nations organized the first World Women's Conference in Mexico City. However, it was the fourth World Women's Conference, 1995, uh, held in Beijing, which is located for the leadership and decision making roles for women. Out of the two objectives, the first one was to, uh, to take affirmative uh, measures to ensure women's equal access and full participation in the power structure, as well as in the decision making. And the second one was to increase women's capacity to participate in it. Special mention was made regarding the low participation of women decision makers at the corporate level. It reflects structural and attitudinal barrier that needs to address through affirmative measures. During the last 25 years, it has been discussed and promoted at several platforms. Even at the 65th session of the United Nations Commission on Status of Women, women's full and effective participation in this and decision making in public life was it. So it is quite obvious that not only in the social life, but in the professional life also, women traditionally treat a subordinate role. Uh, in the literature of Nigel culture, the leader represents a hero figure. At the top of the path, they are which was and will remain male dominated. Glass ceiling, that term was coined in 1980, with sticky floors, may be termed as an invisible barrier to that restricts qualified women from advancing. 
uh, after rise of UN, many countries took affirmative action. Israel was the first one in 1999. One seat was reserved uh, for women in publicly traded companies. Three followed. One third reserved. Uh, uh, followed by uh, Norway in 2005, 40% seats on the reserve, France 2010, 40% again. Apart from um, this quota, other affirmative actions are also being taken as the United States has initiated a national campaign as 2020 Women on Board. Another similar program is Women on Board Pledge for Europe. The Australian story is quite fascinating. They have achieved more than 30% women in the board, on the board without quota, but with consistent effort um, for the last 11 years. Actually, the number of women joining board for, uh, has grown approximately 2% each year from 2009 to 2021. Even other stakeholders as media, trade unions are playing very effective role in promoting gender women participation in many other countries. But this is for the women in general. In case of engineering, there is something special because their participation is very low. Several affirmative actions are being taken across the globe and the result is also positive. But as they move up on the organization ladder, their number decreases. These days, even at the micro level, inclusive work culture has been has become a buzzword as it, it, posit, it positively impacts the profitability of the company. But the unconscious bias, micro inequalities, and bullying restrict women progression. Unconscious bias is a learned assumption, belief, and attitude that exists in the subconscious. While bias is a normal part of human brain function, it can often reinforce stereotypes. Micro inequalities are purely regarding ways in which individuals are either signal out, overlooked, ignored, or other, other, otherwise discounted based on some, uh, some unchangeable characteristics. Bullying implies an intention to harm, intimidate, or force when there is, a, there is an imbalance of power. And the act is a cause for distress and provocation. Bullying may be verbal, physical, or mental. Verbal or physical are bad, but you may have some record of it. But the mental one is worse, and um, you don't have any record of it. It is subtle. And if someone is saying, not someone, but most of people are saying every day that you are bad, you are inferior, then after some time, your brain also starts accepting. So any company which wants to address that issue, uh, the increase women participation in the board, must address that is this issue. Uh, so uh, now to the young women engineers, uh, I believe you all are very good in your field, but uh, to be to be at the leadership role, you would need to have some other attributes, and I'll focus on some of them. Science is based neutral, but when you apply scientific theories to make technology, it becomes place subjective. This varies with culture, streets, and user, place of residence. So you need to understand your customer profile uh, very well. Even if you are dealing with small segment of the production process, you must understand the whole and just uh, think how you can be made, made more, more, more profitable and succeed. Understand the financial aspects through various ratios. Uh, because many a time I have heard that uh, employers um, the creep that when engineers join their organization, they are they don't know finances. I don't. I'm not asking you to be accountant. The accountant will be there, but you need to have a, a, a capacity to keep a watch over the accountant. Be ethical. Be sensitive towards the technological need of poor and deprived sections of the society. Keep your uh, eyes and ears open and above all, the big critical play. Assess the existing technological gap, think critically and out of box to deliver innovative solutions. Stay tuned. Even if you are not going to manufacture it, but authorize someone else, and in return, you will get royalty. I suggest not to follow linear path, but try multi-linear career path. In the era of ICT extent of workplace, 
has been expanded enormously. So apart from your main organization, joint society and social associations as WFEO, invest, become blogger or join some similar virtual platform. These together will balance your well, uh, balance you well, both physically and mentally. Last but not the least, all works and no gain make make kill a dull girl. So even if you are very hard pressed of time, find some time for yourself, do something different from your usual activities. It may be piano, playing piano, painting, cooking, or yoga. Believe me, it will, it will enhance your efficiency at the workplace too. That's all from my side. Thanks, and with all good wishes. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Professor Shima. Uh, I'm Waii, the moder moderator of the events. Now we would like to invite Engineer Anya, the Director of National Council of Engineers, Italy. Engineer Anya graduated in mechanical engineering from University in Italy and Cuba. Since 2011, she's the Director of the National Council of Engineers, member of the Board of Directors of the Foundations of the National Council of Engineers of Italy. And since 2013, she is the member of UPIO, the World Federation of Engineering Organizations, a non-governmental association representing the engineering profession worldwide. Um, basically, since 2019, she has been elected as a national member in the Executive Council of the UPIO and was appointed as the president of the UPIO Award Committee 2020. She has actively participated since 2016 in international conferences in the WPO field on the SDGs of the 2030 agenda, giving contributions through best practices in the plant and equipment sector. Let's welcome Engineer Anya. Thank you so much. Good morning. Good morning. Um, this is my short presentation, but I would like to create a connection with a professor seeing uh, because uh, uh, we have AO is my home, is my second home. It is a lot of time I work in different committee. And uh, now in the role of uh, um, uh, with uh, a chairwoman in the works committee, and talk about with a president, um, Kanga, Vieira, and Professor Kongi for and the committee for change uh, a different rule uh, internal and the committee because it's necessary to work together with uh, other international organization and nominate international jury, uh, a different people, a women, and for example, introduce uh, uh, this idea, uh, the participation of uh, collaboration with the nomination with in-West organization. This is very, very important. More women in the committee and work together with a different and important international organization. Uh, I could I introduce my very, very quickly, my presentation with a flash topic about female engineer. Uh, I would like to, to talk about with uh, a five and six uh, a K words uh, uh, and focus uh, because it's very, very important. The problem with the gender pay gap. For example, this is a concept, uh, the um, salary gap, but in Italy, uh, in the end of October, the parliament approval, the equal salary between men and women. This is a very, very important for my country, I, I think that is uh, with Europe, because uh, uh, Italy, um, this is a leader uh, in, in this, uh, activity respect other country probably um, Norway and other country the north of Europe probably is uh, develop a, a different strategy uh, in this uh, uh, aspect 
Um, I would like to um, the CNI, uh, Council of Engineers of Italy, uh, with every year with uh, um, the study center uh, have a report about the state of female engineer in Italy. But this uh, GIA um, prepared a new, a new report that included the situation of European. It's not very, very uh, long a document, but I think it is very important to have uh, and to prepare a newsletter for the committee, for the um, standard technical committee, and have a short part of the new letter and introduce this topic. In this case, in this graphic, you, um, you know that gender pay gap in Italy by a different uh, sec um, women and men. Um, blue is a woman, um, gray, uh, gray is a man. This is a different of um, uh, a different average uh, hour uh, in. Uh, this is a, a problem now, and I think that is uh, with approval, the, the law uh, change the situation in the future. The second topic, very quickly, the STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. I could, I show, sorry, because it's in Italian, I'm not finished to prepare for, with the department to uh, have a translation directly, because uh, the next month, uh, I, I would like to present a tender of a women engineer because uh, this year CNI prepared a tender a comp national competition with a female engineer. Uh, the topic about agenda um, and the topic relationship with the thesis of the, of the university and the goals. Uh, uh, probably and uh, confer the, the presentation, this in initiative in, in Rome and participate uh, the ministry of, um, and, this is the, uh, and the government. This is a very, very important for, for, my, for uh, my, my country, my, the, the activity. This is a situation of uh, women in Europe. Uh, this is the, the situation is a, a this is an equilibrium. It's not a, a big problem, but it's necessary to create a new project for, but I suggest for, for example, the committee create, for example, a, a, a one project, one project and internal the committee and to uh, present a different country to help probably very simple project, but uh, uh, help for women uh, in the country and establish the, the program, general program and use for this activity. This is a, a good idea. The, the guy, for example, because exists now a different project, but this is a lot, but when you analyze a clear situation, is a very confused, is my personal opinion. Other topic, women engineer in Europe. This is a different situation, Italy, German, French. The situation in Italy is a good position because it's 28% respect. But in this case, uh, this is a graphic, is together engineer and architect because it's very difficult to analyze uh, uh, degree engineer. Um, the other topic is family care. This is a very, very important for a woman. The situation is not good for a woman, for a woman in, in uh, engineer, because in a lot of situations, um, it's very difficult to create the balance uh, with a personal life, a family, a child. It's necessary to create um, a different um, culture, spiritual care, quality of life, and the government to help of all women and the family for uh, continue to uh, develop the, the activity and the, the, the work with the women. And a conclusion very quickly, I could like to, to 
to talk about with, uh, um, in order to face the generally change of the future, uh, we need to ensure that a range of problem solving ability are brought to bear. Uh, this variety of approves uh, need uh, a diversity of mind. Uh, the professor first talk about with the women in the in the board. It's necessary to continue to create activity webinar document and listen the voice very strong because all need a more change but now in this moment thank you so much thank you thank you for the speaker so we have a lot of interesting question here the first questions to um uh engineer anya can you share with us your biggest challenges you have faced in your life as your <laughs> as a woman engineer um, I think that this is passion. You need passion in, in your activity because you believe in your activity, in your job, in your idea, hell, all, all obstacle, all wall uh, from of you is necessary put. And the women have a lot of passion in uh, in the heart and it's necessary put a uh, courage in in the in the activity in the life uh, with uh, in in other um project you have is very very important this is my personal idea yeah okay i would like to invite professor shima can you unmute yourself what's the bigger challenges you have faced as a woman leader Can you unmute yourself, Professor Shima? Yes, hello, thank you, uh, Leon. Actually, can you repeat the question, please? Because there's some problem in the- Okay, Zoom. sure. What is the biggest challenges you have faced as a woman leader? Actually, I have uh, the whole, my uh, the, uh, presentation is all about the bully because uh, the, the hierarchical shape is um, uh, conical. So it, as you grow up, the space is less and more people are trying to accommodate there. So you have in between st stiff struggle and then you have uh, being women. So you have to face certain kind of uh, restrictions also. So as your male colleague may not have that kind of restrictions and that kind of challenges. So main challenge, I, now I believe that it is between the, uh, between the organization. As your superior may be willing also to uh, give you some position or something, uh, something more um, important. But uh, the, your in between your peer group, your colleagues, so, uh, that is the man, that, that is the main challenge and as a leader the uh, women have now th th this is the chance when women should collaborate and then they should help each other also to go up in the hierarchy i believe thank you okay if you are given a chance do you still want to be a lady yes yes certainly why, <laughs> why? It's, it's it's so unique that you um, being women are very I feel very blessed. I I don't want to be a male, but I I, I just I I feel I can't ex accept anything that being women I should not do something, and I should be deprived of something just because I'm a woman. So that is not male or female because. Uh, we all know that that is a biological difference between male and female and so I don't want to be a male. I am very happy being a woman, but I should get I should get all the opportunities which a male is getting. So that is my and I, I am just speaking on behalf of many women and all women, I think. How about uh, engineer Anya? Mm -hmm. So your choice. Uh, repeat, uh, please. Uh, 
uh, sorry because uh, my friend Lydia, I would like to, uh, because Lydia is a professor and the component of the committee, and now I would like to, to prepare a presentation for uh, WFO uh, newsletter and sharing the information about Europe. Uh, yes, of course, it's, it's, it's very important. Repeat the topic, please, sorry. <laughs> If you are given a chance, second life, you still want to be a lady? Uh, the second life, uh, this is the suggestion for the lady. Yes, yes, of course. Yes, yes, it's, uh, it's very important. I said when I participate in the conference, if I were again, I could lie, uh, my, my, I would lie a, a woman and engineer. This is very important and mechanical engineer. Yes, because it's very important. I think that is the engineer open mind and you resolve a problem, problem solving and help you in your personal life. This is very, very important. Okay, now can I will ask you. Yes, now yes. Can I add something? Yeah. Sure, sure. Actually, actually now uh, we are at this, the, the, uh, the, the position in the development and uh, path of the world that engineers have become very important in the developmental framework. Uh, even the C SDGs. So out of 17 SDGs, 10 you need engineers very directly their involvement. So they have come to the center of the developmental framework of any country or of, of the world as a whole. So they are working in agriculture, productivity enhancement. They are working in the population control. They are working in production, sustainable living or something. Every Everywhere, engineers have a role. Uh, so, yes, engineers have become very important in the current scenario of the world. I agree with her, <laughs> with Anya. Thank you. We would like to hear from Dr. Anya Nam. She's the manager, ICT PM Electricity Company of Ghana Limited. Doctor? Can you um, address your remarks on this issue? Um, you mean that um, regarding the challenges that we face? Yes, yes. we want to oh, hear okay. from um, Thank you, um, moderator Wine. Um, yes, we, 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 most of the challenges, especially, I am the Women in Engineering President of Ghana. And um, it's an honor to, to be part of this program. And I would like to say that, yes, despite the challenges that we, we, we face as women, at this, at this point in time, when the world requires certain skills that naturally come to women, um, we need to stand together and be the change that, that we require. Most, most of the challenges that we face here in the country is the, is the fact that um, we have low, we still have the low levels of women studying engineering, studying STEM um, courses. And um, there is the need for the women who are currently practicing um, STEM related um, professions to be able to serve as role models. And once we are role models, we'll be able to encourage an increase the numbers that the low numbers that we face in the country. So for us, the low numbers is as a result of um, the females, most of them um, who have studied science related courses um, and then engineering related courses coming out or stepping out of the profession. And we need to be able to um, develop a mentoring skills or mentoring role model skills to be able to retain these women. That is for us one of the major challenges that we are trying to address in the country. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. you if you are given a second chance, second life, you still want to be a lady? Yes, I, I, would, I would still want to be a lady because um, it's a privilege for me to be a woman in Virginia, finding myself um, we find ourselves just a few women amongst the men, and um, we learn a lot. We we get encouraged. We get encouraged, even though um, it's difficult. We are just um, wherever we find ourselves. People want to um, associate with us, and we bring to 
the, the world solutions that help in, in, in driving the world's economy, that helps in development as well. And so, and like Anya mentioned, we have certain, um, um, we possess certain skills that are, that are passionate. You don't find um, the men having that skill. And we sort of bring up the whole human body in, 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 in a way that develops them in a whole way, not just as one part, but um, in, a, in a complete way. So I think that I'll still want to come out and come back as, as a woman and will also still study engineering and encourage others to also do the same. Thank you. Very good. Okay, now there's a very sensitive question. Do you think the government or authority need to set a quota, let's say, 30% or 20% of the top management should be reserved to ladies or no need? We don't need any quota. Okay, I need to listen. Can I invite Anya? Do you think the government need to set a quota? Um, that means to set a certain percentage that saying that this position should be given to ladies or you think no need? Now I need the women is encouraged. It's not easy. For example, in my situation, I am only women in my board. 10 years is a lot of time. It's difficult, very difficult to create a synergy, to work, to understand. Because when I on the round table in the consider, I am only women. And a good news because now probably the government introduced a new law because in Italy, my 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 position in the board, you need uh, this is um, is no nomination, you elect. It's very difficult for a woman elect because it's into the uh, group. I am only women for 10 years and it's necessary to uh, create a pressure with the government. I um, talk about because it's a law. <laughs> My, uh, I an engineer, it, it's very difficult to create the equilibrium with uh, uh, men on the women and the percent. And now, in this moment, the next week, I approve the regulation about the new the, the new proposal, and it's necessary more women in the board. And I think that it's necessary uh, create uh, and listen. I repeat again, uh, a voice and work together work together, this activity, this webinar, all together increase and uh, explain that it's necessary because it's a lot of problem, okay? And help the women to found the way, okay? And for example, in my life, in my career, I, it's necessary to uh, a coach with a person and help me, guide me. Uh, because it's very difficult because the mentality women and men is different, but it's necessary in the team, the project and the team work because it's, um, it's very, very important. My, my opinion, this is uh, uh, personal that um, continue, continue to work uh, and use the strategy, okay? Because it's not necessary women because of women, no. Uh, in position in the uh, top leader position is necessary because you have the capacity, okay, and recognize this capacity, not for women, for uh, your career, okay. Thank you. Very good. Professor Shima, do you think that your university need to reserve 10%, 20% professorship for ladies? Thank you, uh, Leon. Actually, uh, just I'll add uh, what uh, Anya said. Uh, uh, and I've spoken also in my presentation because uh, you need women in the board. Because engineering is nowadays in the, in the, uh, in the era of artificial intelligence, industrial uh, revolution 0 0.2 or fourth industrial revolution. So, uh, Customer because uh, personalized services engineering are engineers are providing through engineering practices, and everybody. So you need to have diversity of 
um, uh, uh, of uh, opinion of the outlook also and that for that reason not uh, not only women but other um, other uh, type of like lower segment of the society so all those people need to have some voice because uh, engineering is not only for elite technology is in general word technology enhances productivity so whatever you are doing if something is increasing your productivity it is it is technology and uh, so everyone should be kept in at least conversation should be there second thing quota uh, quota is good quota maybe uh, may give some chance um, uh, immediately but in the long run it, it's the work culture which should be in, in, it, that should be more inclusive like um, uh, she said that uh, more uh, and many i have read many a time that uh, engineering work workplace is very masculine in, in masculine in nature and many women they withdraw from their uh, the labor market because they don't feel comfortable so uh, uh, one effort i have made that in the uh, in the uh, going uh, uh, academic session i have asked my student male and female both to prepare assignment on women in stem so boys are also making so for that making that assignment they are thinking they are working what is what what is the status of women in engineering so because men also need to be sensitive enough to accept women in the in the workspace and the board also because just a quota is not ultimate because uh, even if you give quota and you recruit something but if she does not have any voice so it doesn't make and that, that does not make any uh, any sense so give her two thoughts that's all thank you very good I, i'm very keen to learn from uh, dr enyonam from ghana what is the current situation in ghana do you need quota for ladies um, the current situation in Ghana, we have, um, I can speak about the um, percentages in engineering in Ghana right now. Um, uh, there are about 8% registered female practitioners in engineering in the country as compared to our male counterparts. And um, I'll say that the, because of our cultural norms and um, because of the way things are done within the country is the natural, the natural way in which um, um, our leaders operate is that naturally they, they think that when it comes to engineering, the women are not the ones to be taking the decisions um, in the country. And um, it's, been, it's been quite tough, um, even though we are, making, we are making a lot of strides. We currently have um, a policy in the country that is being driven by the Ministry of Women and Gender that is ensuring that um, we have a, at least a, a fair representation of women at decision-making levels. And um, they are working with us directly. They are also working with um, a lot of the agencies to ensure that the strategies that are required to bring um, women into the, the decision-making positions are done. And um, I mentioned already that one of the areas is mentoring and then role modeling. The second area that we are looking at is to build the skills of the women, um, especially in leadership and also in managerial skills so that once we, we, ha we have built their capacities and their skills, Whenever there are opportunities, they are the, naturally the, the ones who um, um, are chosen. And also, like in my, my, my company example, we have a gender and social inclusion policy that has been launched two years ago. That is saying that whenever there are positions, especially at the managerial level, um, and women, um, women, qualified, they should be considered for these positions. So that is what, what is the current state um, that is happening in Ghana. And that is where we, we are. But when it comes to quota, well, there have been a number of 
affirmative actions here and there to ensure that um, we are bringing qualified women into the position. But the, the, the emphasis is on qualification. And so um, most of the programs are geared towards building the capacity of women in, in leadership and management roles. Thank you. Thank you, very good. Now I would like to invite our chair ladies, Yutunda, to raise her questions. Um, hello again. Um, I wanted to ask if um, any of the ladies here has experienced workplace bullying and how it was dealt with. Because um, we have a lot of people on the program, we have the younger ones, and um, addressing that kind of thing will be encouraging to um, the younger engineers. So that's one of the questions I wanted to ask. Um, I'm also, I also would like to know whether you have any ideas on how female engineers can upskill so that they can be retained in engineering and they can attain those leadership positions. Sometimes the ladies are not, uh, they, they don't have the skills. So I'd like um, the, the discussions to please talk about that quickly. We really don't have too much time, but we've been, we, this has been very interesting. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, so Leo, should I, should I? Yes, definitely. Prof. Yeah. Shima, yes. Yeah, thank you. Uh, actually, uh, I'm, uh, I'm very happy at least, not happy. So happy is not the right word. So, but I am, uh, encouraged because this is a very burning issue at the workplace. Like we, uh, 10 years back, I'm working uh, on women engineers since last 20 years and the problems are changing every day. We, and nowadays the present scenario, the um, um, most uh, uh, pressing problem you can say is bullying at the workplace. And that may be one of the reason why women, many women, talented women they leave uh, um, uh, engineering uh, profession and they can join somewhere as in the managerial position because they have skills. So they are in uh, high demand in other organization also. So uh, uh, serious thought has to be given on this So how to this uh, bullying uh, or uh, any kind of like harassment is sexual harassment we generally say, but that is, that is yeah, very means uh, that is very simple to define, but there are so many other uh, way, other uh, type of harassment, which, which is difficult to codify, and sometimes which uh, is difficult to uh, report also. I well, as I said in my presentation, because mental, every day if people are saying that you are inferior, you are inferior. Then after four, five years or two years, your brain will also accept that you are inferior. And then you, you will not make any effort to go anywhere. And in that way, because um, this is my very um, uh, the output of my research, uh, long research, that this uh, association like NOS or WFEO, so they, they can play a very important role where all women are meeting, they are discussing, and then you have a channel to work there. So um, you can, uh, so that... Uh, that kind of your uh, pessimism can be take means can be or means the your uh, the the that so, the, the association those association can uh, or the positivity of those association can overpower the, your pessimism and just um, just uh, tell you in some way not directly but in some other way or indirectly that yes you can also do and then it is a very big booster in for you. Any, any girl, any young women or middle age who, who has not gone to the leadership position, but can be, can be, can aspire to go or can in the way to go to, the, because quota, people are not, means the, it is very common kind of excuse. There is no suitable uh, candidate for that. So in the, in the, the writing paper or something, it is very, very, physical thing and then you can you can do everything for that but in the interview if people say that you are inferior then uh, you have to accept it that you are inferior who will judge it so uh, the, the, 
these are these are the issue which which needs to be uh, talked about much like i am very happy that at this platform we are talking so much because this is a this can be initiation for just targeting that is a very from a very uh, prominent problem at the workplace today after in 2021 <laughs> yes thank you very and good then, yeah. and then you what we say how what so when you when the girl will feel that i am i am i am uh, required I, my voice is being heard so she will like to because she she loves engineering that's why she have read engineering ko is very difficult and she has done btech and mtech and may have done something else also so why she will leave so if she will feel at home at the workplace she will not leave the engineering profession so the that is the that is the crux of the problem i think thank you impressive very good comment uh engineer adia you can you unmute was it not was uh unmute <laughs> Uh, sorry. Uh, for example, thank you for the for the question, suggestion for you to that. But for example, in this competition, this is uh, participate uh, a very young women engineer, and I create because I develop the the competition and evaluation with a plan for of uh, a software because I need to. A grid evaluation, and I put the motivation letter with the uh, uh, girls because it's very John, uh, the the women engineer. B why the motivation letter and and, and CV, you know, because it's very important. The the, the women engineer uh, recognize the capacity. Okay, and analyze. I am a strong. I I non a strong. I am a smart. I am non a smart. And I good impression because this generation is very sure and feel sure and express very open the idea, the point of view about the role of the women because the topic is agenda. The the, the main topic is goal number five. And it's uh, very important with the relationship, the role of the women in the society. I am very happy with uh, when I read with my colleagues in the commission the motivation letter because this I uh, this is uh, uh, necessary to to. Uh, have in the format and respect because uh, this uh, um, a step with a final point average in the in the competition about bullying i think that this um, the women have silent it is not good because support support all is not good but i think that is you put uh, and the government and the organization a project and show a role model and the webinar and you sharing with a back practice uh, and not create this situation and talk about with the uh, with the guy with the man and the woman and participate together this is i uh, is my personal uh, opinion Uh, Dr. Enoyan, can you say something? Well, the question was about um, if we experience bullying in other workplaces and all that. Um, I will continue to say yes, even in, within our engineering organization as females, we, we experience um, some form of bullying. We also have um, instances where um, We've, we've come to bear on um, even intense um, in making, providing feedback, showing that there still exists sex, sexual harassment and then um, some form of bullying as well. And um, I would say that how we, 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 we need to be able to continue speaking about it 
women who are in leadership positions like us, um, women who are in STEM, women who have graduated, who are in, um, in engineering careers, we need to bring this to bear. Normally, um, when we have forums, open forums, when we have discussions, we need to um, take and bring these things out in the open so that um, um, such things can, can, can be addressed immediately. Um, we don't need to sit down and say that, well, this is um, the norm within the country that we exist. If we continue like that, I don't think we'll be able to make the strides that we, we want to make or we, we have decided to make, or we won't be able to improve the percentages and the gaps. So we need to um, bring these things to bear and we need to stand on the policies that countries, most countries have committed to um, the policies that um, include affirmative actions and ensuring that women are brought into leadership positions. So if we are in leadership positions, especially for us who are in leadership positions, we need to ensure that these policies don't just exist on paper, but are enforced and are, are implemented to the core so that we improve, we improve the numbers and make sure that we can, um, and research we all have, uh, we all know, has shown that companies that have, um, and have put women at the forefront of, of their decision-making um, decision making departments have, have performed. We have examples within, within Ghana. APSA Bank, I always say, is, is one of the, is, has won a lot of awards, not because they, 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 they are not facing challenges, but they've realized that the women possess a lot of um, abilities that help them to improve. So they have brought the women on board and they are making strides. So that is the, the advice I will give all of us. We don't need to sit down. We need to enforce the policies that count our countries have committed to and then um, and, and bring these actions out so that it can be addressed um, to ensure that women don't go away or leave the engineering field and also the STEM related Fields. Thank you. Lady and the gentlemen, to end the sections on the female retention and leadership in engineering series, I really would like to invite all the four outstanding ladies here to provide a few sentences to inspire our women in engineering, also women leaders, um, to progress further. First of all, I would like to invite Professor Shima, yes. can you inspire our ladies here? Yes, certainly they are very good. They are very blessed because uh, they are engineer. And uh, generally uh, we have been told like patriarchy, uh, we have been taught that uh, the, the home is our first priority. So that is going to be our first priority, but don't compromise with your career also and uh, don't think that I have completed BTEC or MTEC so that is all because to be in demand, to be employed, remain employable, to be, uh, to remain uh, in demand by the employer, by the stakeholders, by your uh, customers, you have to uh, continuously hone your skills also because the uh, engineering is changing very fast. So you have to hone your skill. First is uh, beside family, families, uh, male and female complement each other. So beside your family, you have to uh, take your career also. You have to give your uh, career also a very important uh, position in your uh, list of achieve, uh, 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 list of what, what you have to achieve and what you have to retain also. And um, think big and you are capable of achieving that. All the best. Yes, think big, very inspiring. Engineer Anya, let's give some energy, empower women. I, I think that is the women engineer carry innovation. It's necessary more women engineer in the board, in the university, in the society. 
and the women in general. And for example, today in the, the gov Italian government, the finance uh, and, econ and economy ministry have uh, uh, and developed the, the webinar about violence of a women. This is very important that the government and the top manager talk about women, women and men together with a new policy. Okay, and it's necessary to increase the participation of, of, the, of the women and not create problems with career, with the family, because it's necessary, uh, the contribution in, in the society. And I continue to say again, women and men together, this is uh, the relationship uh, very important and it's, it's important this uh, uh, equilibrium uh, of the job of the family of, of the society i think that is uh, a, a, a important contribution i i i am I am, I am feel very happy for when talk about with my colleagues and in the other situation because increase and open my the idea and listen my 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 friend my my colleagues the other country and work together for change a future. Thank you. Excellent. We would like to invite Doctor Enyunam for your final remarks. We need ohms, we need power and energy. Please, can I say something before any of them speaks? Yeah, Thank yeah, you. yes, yes. Thank you. Um, you wanted some uh, words of inspiration. I wanted to say, I mean, nobody knows it all, but um, I think that it's important for women, engineers particularly, to know that their perspective is important. Their views are important and they shouldn't be discouraged. Though I keep saying it, the way a woman sees, for example, a garden is different from the way a man sees a garden. We are, we are seeing different things most times. Um, I also want women to know that they have to be resilient. From the start, they need to know that it's a difficult journey or a tough journey, and they should be prepared for the journey and not stop go thriving and trying because they must get to leadership positions. Um, the other thing I'd like to add is that as women, when we get to those leadership positions, we should pull another woman up. So uh, some people are private, but even in that you can showcase your career, what you've done, what you've achieved, the problems that you've had, that you've overcome, the, the challenges, and pull another woman up, at least one other woman up. When you get to the C-suite, pull another woman up so that open the door for another woman. Some people say that open the door, leave the door open. Don't shut the door against other women. Don't think, oh, she doesn't know it. She can't do it. No, 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 no. People have different challenges and we need to pull another woman up. Thank you. Very good. I, I, I'm, I feel that I'm very inspired by your speech, really. Dr. Anana? Anana, yeah. Thank you very much. Um, why? Um, on behalf of the president of the Women in Engineering Committee of World Federation of Engineering Organizations, Engineer Yetunde, and um, on behalf of the executives, on behalf of um, the entire body of Wafio, I would like to say a big thank you to our panelists. Um, our speaker, sorry, our, our, our moderator wine as well, and all webinar participants and ladies and gentlemen for how, um, actually making time to be part of this um, this webinar. We, you all bear with me that we have learned a lot, and we have come to realize that um, the challenges that we face, especially regarding female retention in engineering is, is, is worldwide. It's not unique to our countries alone. And there is a call for action that we have all um, been asked to do today. And so we say that we should all make a difference at all levels where we are 
we should serve as we can say, we should be ourselves and um, we should offer ourselves as role models. As engineer Yetunde just said that our chair, she mentioned that we should showcase our careers. We should pull, we should not pull anyone, any woman down and that the women who are higher up should be able to lift up and open the door for other women to be able to be part of um, or to remain in engineering. So on this note, we'd like to thank you all for making time to be a part of this program. And um, I would like to leave us all with a famous quote by the US Vice President, President Kamala, um, US Vice President Kamala, Kamala Harris, who says that as women, our unity is our strength and uh, also diversity is our power. Let us go forth and make sure that we promote and implement the policies that our leaders have committed to and make the difference wherever we are. Thank you very much. I think we've lost Waye. I think we've lost um, Waye, so I'll thank everybody again and um, we, I think she took some photographs, but um, anyway, thank you all for coming um, and um, hope we can keep in touch as women and be stronger together. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Bye-bye.